candidate who insults Mexicans and Latinos. They're not going to vote for a candidate who insults Muslims and women, who insults veterans and African Americans. The American people understand that our strength, our unique strength, among all nations of the world is our diversity. Is the fact that as a nation and California as a state, we have people coming from hundreds of countries all over this world. And that makes us stronger, not weaker. And our goal is to build upon that diversity. Black and white and Latino and Asian American and Native American. Gay and straight, male and female. People born in this country, people who have come into this country. And when we stand together, and we don't allow the Trumps of the world to try to divide us up, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. Now the theme, the theme, the theme of this campaign is called the political revolution. And guess what? You are the revolutionaries. Now, two years ago, there was a, what we call a midterm election, non-presidential national election. You know what percentage of the American people voted? About 33%. 67% of the American people did not vote. 80% of young people did not vote. 75% of low-income working people did not vote and the Republicans won a landslide victory. And that is what very often happens when people give up on the political process, when people are demoralized, when people say, it doesn't matter, I'm not going to participate, bad things happen. Now, I am a member of the United States Senate, and I know something about this. What what the big money interests want. They don't want working people to vote. They want to be able to control the government, control our economy. That's what they want. On June 7th, let's give them a rude awakening. Let's tell them that enough is enough. the birdie, but you know what? It's not birdie, it's you. In other words, and now let me tell you something, no other candidate for president, I think, probably has ever said this, but this is the truth. The truth is that no president, not Bernie Sanders or anybody else, can do it alone. We are now in the process of taking on Wall Street which has endless supplies of money. I mean endless. We are taking on corporate America, which if they want, and what they have done, shut down factories all over this country and move to China if they can make $5 more in profit. We are taking on wealthy campaign contributors. Do you think most candidates have meetings like this in Cathedral City? They're busy going to some billionaire's mansion and getting $50,000 a person to campaign. Oh, which reminds me, while I'm here, anybody got $50,000 to contribute? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. 
But that's what the difference is between our campaign and the other campaigns. Now you want to hear something, it would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. Donald Trump tells us, who knows, he lies all the time. But he claims, he claims to be a billionaire. We'll take him for his word. He is soliciting funds from Sheldon Adelson, a multi-billionaire. So what you got is a multi-billionaire supporting a billionaire. That is not what American democracy is supposed to be about. American democracy is one person, one vote. Now, it is true that Wall Street has the money. Corporate America has enormous power. The corporate media will tell you what they want you to know, not what the American people need to know. And we have wealthy campaign contributors directing what happens in Congress. That is all true, but there is another truth. And the other truth is that when millions of people stand up and fight back, we have the power and we can win. Now we're going to win here in California. We're going to win. We're going to win this nomination and we're going to win the general election because we're doing something. We're doing something that is very radical. We are telling the American people the truth. Here is the truth. We have a corrupt campaign finance system today which is undermining American democracy. Together we're going to overturn this disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decision. And we're going to have public funding of elections. I want anybody here, and I want you all to think about it. Think about running for school board. Think about running for legislature. Think about running for Congress. And I want you to be able to run without begging millionaires for campaign contributions. But it's not just a corrupt campaign finance system, it is a rigged economy. You all know what I mean by a rigged economy? Here is what a rigged economy is. Over the last 25 years, there has been a massive redistribution of wealth in this country. The middle class has shrunk and the top one-tenth of one percent has seen a doubling of the percentage of wealth it owns. In other words, the very, very, very rich get much richer while tens of millions of working families become poorer. What we have right now is the top one-tenth of one percent owning almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Got that? How did that happen? You got 20 people in this country, wealthiest 20, owning far more wealth than the bottom half of America, 150 million people. You got one family, everybody know the Walton family of Walmart? You got any Walmarts near here? Anybody here work at Walmart? Well, what Walmart does, and this is the wealthiest family in America, think about it. They pay wages that are so low that many of their workers are forced to go on food stamps and Medicaid. And you know what a rigged economy is about? Working families pay higher taxes to provide food stamps for Walmart employees a company owned by the wealthiest family in America. That's a rigged economy. And I say to the wall, I say to the Walton family, get off of welfare, pay your workers a living wage. Now this 
Next, Will, let me say something that will shock the younger people. They will not think I'm telling the truth, but it is the truth, and you can Google it, not now, after you get out of here. And here's the fact. Over the last 30 years, we all know we have seen an explosion of technology. When I was a kid, we didn't have these things. And yet, what has happened is that every worker, almost every worker in America, has become more productive because of that technology. We produce more. And yet, despite that, 40 years ago, we had families in America where one worker, in those days often the man, could work 40 hours a week, one person, and bring in enough money to take care of the family. Today, there are very few families that you know where mom is not working, where dad is not working, and where the kids are not working, and yet they're still struggling to pay the bills. Something is wrong with that. Millions of people in America today are working not one job, they're working two jobs, they're working three jobs. What our job together is, and this is what we accomplish when we make it to the White House, we create an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. I'll tell you something else. A great nation, a truly great nation, is not measured by how many millionaires it has or by how many nuclear weapons it has. A great nation is measured, is judged, by how it treats the weakest and most vulnerable people amongst us. There is no excuse that in America we have millions of senior citizens, disabled veterans, and people with disabilities who are struggling right now to stay alive on $10,000 a year Social Security. There is no excuse when in this country, the wealthiest country in the history of the world, we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country. There is no excuse where today, in Cathedral City or in Burlington, Vermont, moms are going out to work, they're working 50 or 60 hours a week at low wages, and they don't have enough money to provide decently for their children. That is not what this country is supposed to be about. So what are we going to do about it? I'll tell you what we're going to do about it. Now that you asked, I'll tell you. What we're going to do is make it very clear that in this country, if you work 40 hours a week, you will not live in poverty. And that means raising the federal starvation minimum wage from seven and a quarter an hour to $15 an hour. And what it means is that in America, women should not be forced to work for 79 cents on the dollar compared to men. And I know that every man here is going to stand with the women in the fight for pay equity. Now, every month you see on the front pages of the newspaper a report from the federal government. It talks about unemployment in America. And what they say is roughly that official unemployment in America is about 5%. Anybody here believe that? No. Well, you're right. It is not 5%. If you consider those people who have given, given up looking for work and the millions of people who are working part-time when they want to work full-time, real unemployment is close to 10%. And there are communities all over this country in inner cities and in rural America where the numbers are much higher than that. Our job together is to put the American people back to work. We should be hiring.
hiring teachers, not firing teachers. We should be hiring well-paid, well-trained child care workers so when mom goes to work, she knows her kid is getting quality child care. All over this country, communities are struggling with clean water, with wastewater plants, with roads, and with bridges that are deteriorating and becoming obsolete. In my state of Vermont, we have potholes so large, cars go over them, they disappear, we got to throw the people out in the summertime. And that's true all over this country. Actually, billions of dollars of damage is caused to automobile owners because of bad roads. You know that? People go over these potholes, their axles get breaking, tires get broken, etc. What we need to do is to put our people back to work rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. 13 million decent paid jobs. This campaign has a message to the billionaires and the large corporations, and that message is your greed is helping to destroy this country. You no longer are going to get it all. It is absurd that we have multinational corporations making billions of dollars a year in profits, stashing their money in tax havens all over the world, and end up not paying in a given year five cents in federal taxes. It is absurd that we got hedge fund managers on Wall Street who pay an effective, i.e. real tax rate, lower than many of you do. We are going to tell corporate America that yes, they will start paying their fair share. In the last 15 years, this country has seen the loss of millions of good paying jobs because corporate greed has shut down manufacturing plants in America. We've lost tens of thousands of factories, thrown people out on the street, and they go to China or other low-wage countries to produce their products. Together we're going to rebuild the manufacturing sector in this country. And the message is clear to corporate America. If you want the American people to buy your products, you damn well better start manufacturing them here in this country, not in China. You know, it's unbelievable. I mean, what we're talking about is greed that is literally unparalleled in the history of this country. I was in Indiana last month. Two plants are being shut down by a company called United Technologies. A few years ago, this company had $171 million to pay a severance package to its CEO. They gave him $171 million when he left, and yet they don't have enough money to keep factories in Indiana at 2,000 workers on the job. That is not acceptable. Over in Anaheim, I was in Anaheim the other day. You got Disney there. Well, Disney pays its workers wages that are very hard for their workers to live on but somehow has enough money to pay $42 million to its CEO. And by the way, Disney prefers to manufacture its toys and its t-shirts and everything else in China rather than in the United States. So our message is Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, come home! This campaign is not just about ending a corrupt campaign finance system in which billionaires buy elections. It is not just turning around a rigged economy in which the very rich get richer and almost everybody else gets poorer.
It is also about dealing with the national disgrace of a broken criminal justice system. I was a mayor. I was a mayor of Burlington, Vermont for eight years. And in that capacity, I dealt with our local police department, a great department. And I worked with police officers all over this country. And let me be clear, the average police officer in America is honest, is hardworking, and has a very, very difficult job. Not easy being a cop today. But, like any other public official, if a police officer breaks the law, that officer must be held accountable. And when we talk about criminal justice reform, we're also talking about reforming local police departments. And that means we have got to demilitarize local police departments. Police departments, police departments should be part of the community, not be seen as an oppressive force in the community. We have got to make local police departments reflect the diversity of the communities they serve. We have got to end private corporate ownership of prisons and detention centers. People, corporations should not be making money by locking up more and more people. We have got to create a national law enforcement culture which says that lethal force shooting somebody is the last response, not the first response. We have got to rethink the so-called war on drugs. Now, it turns out, turns out that over the last 30 years, millions of Americans have received criminal records for possession of marijuana. It turns out that studies indicate that blacks and whites do marijuana at about equal rates, but this is a racial issue because blacks are four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana than whites. Turns out that rather in a crazy way, right now the Federal Controlled Substance Act lists marijuana as a Schedule I drug, the highest level, right next to heroin. Now all of you know the people argue about the pluses and minuses of marijuana, but nobody argues that heroin is a killer drug. They are not equal. Now, all of you know, all of you know that the question of legalizing marijuana is not a federal issue, it is a state issue. At the federal level, I intend to take marijuana out of the federal control. But the decision to legalize marijuana is a state issue. Four states. Washington, D.C. have voted to legalize marijuana. That issue actually will be on the ballot here in California. Right. I think weighing the pros and the cons, my own view is if I were a resident of California, I would vote to legalize marijuana. But when we talk about drugs, let me just say this. Everybody here knows or should know that we have a major epidemic in this country of opiate addiction and heroin addiction. This is impacting my state, it is impacting the entire country. And what that means is that today and yesterday and tomorrow, people are dying from overdoses of heroin and opiates. This is a crisis that we must address.
in my view, the most effective way, the most sensible way to address this crisis is to understand that substance abuse, whether it is drugs or alcohol, should be seen as a health issue, not a criminal issue. And that means, that means we need a revolution in mental health treatment in this country. It means that when we have hundreds of thousands of people addicted to one drug or another in this country, we have got to provide mental health treatment to those people when they need it, not six months from now. And I'll tell you something else, which is not a pleasant thought, but it's true, that right now in this country, we have thousands of people walking the streets of America who are suicidal and in some cases homicidal. We need to understand that just like a physical crisis, somebody gets into an automobile accident, they go to an emergency room. Right now, if you have a mental health crisis, if you are on the edge, if you're suicidal, God forbid if you're homicidal, we need to get those people the help they need now, not six months from now. This campaign is going to win because we are addressing the real issues facing the American people. This campaign is listening to young people. Look, here is the truth, and everybody knows it's the truth. We live in a very competitive global economy. We need the best educated workforce in the world if our economy is to do well. And that means, this is not hard to understand, I want, you want, what common sense dictates is that every American, young people, middle-aged people, the economy changes, people should be able to get all the education that they need so they can get the good jobs that are out there. Here is the truth. 50 years ago, 50 years ago, you had a high school degree, the odds are that you were able to go out and get a pretty good job and make it into the middle class. By and large, those days are gone. The economy has changed, technology has changed, education has changed. Today, people need more education to keep up with a changing economy. And that is why I believe that in the year 2016, when we talk about public education, it can no longer just be first grade through 12th grade. We've got to make public, public colleges and universities tuition free. So let me ask you an honest question. Does anybody here think that that is a radical idea? radical idea. It's a common sense idea. The economy changes, our educational system has got to change with a changing economy. Absolutely. Right now, if you go to Germany, if you go to Scandinavia, do you know how much it costs to go to college in those countries? Zero. Zero. Absolutely. And those governments aren't dumb. What they understand is that investing in their young people is investing in the future of their economy. And here is something else that a lot of people don't talk about. 40, 50 years ago, here in California, your great public university system, the you know how much it cost, tuition wise, to go to the University of California? It costs virtually nothing. So we have got to ask ourselves a rather simple question. How does it happen that 40, 50 years ago, people could go to the University of California virtually tuition free, but not today? If we could do it 50 years ago, we sure as heck can do it today. I want you all to know what it means 
if we have tuition-free public colleges and universities. It says to kids in Burlington, Vermont, or in Cathedral City, kids like myself, who grew up not with a lot of money, parents didn't go to college, you've got kids out there who never for one second think that they're going to be able to go to college because they're just too poor. We are telling every child in California today and every child in America that if you study hard, you take school seriously, you do well in school, yes, you will be able to get a college education regardless of the income of your family. And that is what America is supposed to be about. How many people here right now are dealing with student debt? I've been all over this country and the response is always the same. We've got millions of people dealing with student debt. You go to medical school, I've talked to doctors now, $300,000 in debt. Talk to dentists graduating dental school, $400,000. We should not be punishing people for doing the right thing and getting an education. And that is why I believe that anybody who has student debt today, and some of those folks are paying interest rates of 6, 8, 10%. I believe that those people should be able to refinance their loans at the lowest interest rates they can find. Now people say to me, they say, Bernie, you know, you're Santa Claus, you're a nice guy, you're giving away all of these things. You're giving away free tuition at public colleges, you get a substantially lower student debt, how are you going to pay for it? Well, let me tell you exactly how we're going to pay for it. You know, it's always a funny thing that when you fight for working families and you fight for low-income families, suddenly it's just so expensive we can't afford it. But when you go to war in Iraq, no problem, we got trillions of dollars. Donald Trump wants to give hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the top two-tenths of one percent. Not a problem. But I'll tell you how we're going to pay for free tuition in public colleges. And that is we're going to impose a tax on Wall Street speculation. Now here's something that's a little bit scary, but it's true and it's important to know this. It's not just that Wall Street's greed and recklessness and illegal behavior drove this country into the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. That's true. But it is also that Wall Street, the most powerful political and economic entity in America, their business model, their basic business model is based on fraud. That's what it is. Some of you may know the Goldman Sachs Five or six weeks ago, they reached a settlement with the United States government for $5 billion. And they reached that settlement because they acknowledge that the subprime mortgage packages they were selling were worthless. And they were ripping off the American people. I believe that today we should impose a tax on Wall Street speculation that will bring in more than enough money to provide free tuition and substantially lower student debt. This campaign is listening to the Latino community. And the Latino community points out that we have 11 million undocumented people today. That many of those people who are at work right now are being exploited. Because when you don't have legal rights, your employer can cheat you, can pay you below the minimum wage, cannot give you the benefits that you are entitled to, and you cannot fight back. 
That is why I believe that we need comprehensive immigration reform in this country and a path towards citizens. Our immigration policy should be to unite families, not divide families. And if Congress does not do its job and pass immigration reform legislation, I will use the executive powers of the presidency to do it again. Too many people in this country are living in fear. We've got to end the current deportation policies. This campaign is listening to the African American community. And they are asking me why it is that throughout this country, inner cities of America are crumbling, unemployment rates outrageously high. There are communities in America where there are no grocery stores, there are no bank branches, there is no access to decent health care. We are going to change our national priorities. Instead of rebuilding communities in Afghanistan, we're going to rebuild communities in inner cities in this country. This campaign is listening to the Native American community. Everybody here knows that the Native American community has been lied to, has been cheated from the first day, from before this country became a country. And yet our culture, who we are as a people, owes the Native American people a debt that can never fully be repaid. They have taught us so much. Among other things, they have taught us a profound, profound lesson that we must learn. And that is, as human beings, we are part of nature. We must live with nature. And then if we continue to destroy nature, we are destroying the human species. We are destroying ourselves. me to the issue of clean water in America. In our country and all over the world, there is a growing crisis with regard to clean drinking water, and that is why I believe we have got to end fracking. Now, that is not the position of my Democratic opponent, Secretary Clinton. We are right, she is wrong. We got to end practice. I am a member of the U.S. Senate Committee on the Environment. And I will tell you what every person here knows because you have eyes to see. And that is that anyone who tells you that climate change is not real is lying to you. It is beyond my belief, and I really say this, you know, I have strong disagreements with Republicans. I'm probably the most progressive member of the Senate. I have disagreements. But when you have Republican candidates like Trump and virtually all the rest get up and say climate change is a hoax, what world are they living in? The idea that they will reject what almost every scientist who studies this issue all over the world is saying is beyond comprehension and incredibly dangerous. The truth is, A, climate change is of course real. Our planet is getting warmer every day. B, the evidence is overwhelming. Climate change is caused by human activity. And C, as you well know here in California, climate change is already causing major problems in the United States and in fact all over the world. That's the fact. And it saddens me 
that the Republican Party, with very few exceptions, is so beholden to the fossil fuel industry that they don't have the guts to acknowledge reality. But we acknowledge reality and we know that we have a moral responsibility to leave this planet in a way that is healthy and habitable for our children and our grandchildren. We will take on the fossil fuel industry. And we will transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to sustainable energy, wind, solar, geothermal, and energy efficiency. When as human beings, we think about what the needs are of people. We all need to eat well. We all need to breathe clean air. We all need a roof over our heads. But you know what else we all need? Whether we're rich, whether we're poor, whether we're young, whether we're old, we need access to quality health care. Now, television doesn't discuss this very much, but every other major country on Earth guarantees health care to all people as a right, and that's what we have got to do here in the United States. How many people, how many people here have no health insurance? Wow, okay. All right, and you all know what that means when you walk around without any health insurance. That you can't go to a doctor when you're sick, but if you get into an accident, you're going to go deeply into debt. How many people here have insurance but are paying high deductibles and high co-payments? Yeah. And that means that if you don't have any money, even if you have insurance, you're not going to go to the doctor when you're sick because you can't afford the co-payment or the deductibles, all right? Well, I think it is time to end all of that stuff. I think it is time for the United States to guarantee health care to all people as a right. And that is why we are going to pass a Medicare for all health care system. It is absurd that 29 million Americans have no health insurance. Many of you are underinsured. And every one of us is getting ripped off by the unconscionable greed of the pharmaceutical industry. They spend billions of dollars on lobbying and campaign contributions to make sure that our people pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs message to them is whether they like it or not, that greed is going to stop. People in this country should have access to the medicine they need when they need it. People should not be dying or getting sick because they can't afford the medicine they require. And by the way, there is going to be a ballot item in November here on the California ballot which calls on the state of California to control the cost of prescription drugs. And it's a great idea. I would urge you to support it. And the pharmaceutical industry will spend tens of millions of dollars on TV ads. Do not believe them. The top five drug companies last year made $50 billion in profit, while one out of five Americans could not afford to fill their prescriptions. Everybody here knows that real change always takes place from the bottom on up, never from the top on down. That is the history of the workers' movement, and the creation of trade unions. It is the history of the civil rights movement and the fight against slavery and racism and bigotry. It is the history of the women's movement. 100 years ago, people don't know this, they forget it. 
A hundred years ago, not a long time ago, women in America did not have the right to vote, did not have the right to get the education or the jobs they wanted. A hundred years ago, women were told that their function in life was to stay home and have babies. But women stood up and fought back. And women said that in America, they will not be second-class citizens. And that's how change takes place. And change takes place when people in the gay community, with their straight allies, they said that in America, we're going to end discrimination against the LGBT community. And I want you all to know, what I think most of you do, is that that fight for gay rights was a very difficult fight because gay community and their straight allies were taking on an incredible level of ignorance and bigotry and homophobia. But the gay community stood up and what they said is that in the United States, people should have the right to love whoever they want, regardless of gender. And today, as a result of that struggle, gay marriage is legal in every state in America. Brothers and sisters, we are at a pivotal moment in American history. And the danger that we face is both our, economic, our, our economy and our political system is becoming more and more oligarchic. Our politics are controlled by a handful of billionaires who spend unlimited sums of money trying to buy elections. Our economy is controlled by a small number of multinational corporations who could care less about the average worker and their greed has done incalculable harm to the middle class of this country. What this campaign is about is asking people to stand up to the status quo and to think outside of the box. But this campaign is about, and I am seeing it from coast to coast, people are looking around them and saying, why is it I am working longer hours for low wages? Why is it that my pension is being threatened? Why is it that I'm forced to work for nine bucks an hour and almost all new income and wealth is going to the 1%? People are asking, how does it happen that for 30 years the middle class of this country has been shrinking while the very rich become richer? People are asking, why is it that kids are leaving college forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in debt? People are asking, how does it happen that in this great country we are the only major nation on earth not to guarantee paid family and medical leave? Why are we the only country not to guarantee health care to all people? Why is it that our infrastructure is crumbling and we got millions of people who have no jobs? Why is it that corporations in a given year make billions and don't pay a nickel in taxes? People are looking out all over this country and they are saying enough is enough. People are beginning to stand up and fight back and demand that we have a government that represents all of us, not just wealthy campaign contributors. On June 7th, there is going to be a very, very important Democratic primary here in California. 475 delegates are at stake. If we have a large voter turnout, we are going to win the California primary. So I hope that on June 7th, 
you'll bring out your family, you'll bring out your friends, your co-workers, and let this great state, one of the most progressive states in America, tell the world you are ready for the political